Welcome back to New Mexico Media Makers. Joining us now is local actor, writer, and producer, Mike Ostrowski. Mike, Hello. thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So we hear you've got some great news to share with us on a film you help produce and star in. Tell us about this film. Yeah, yeah the film is called Those That Play Your Clowns. It's a quote from Hamlet. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, a, the, the debut short of a new production company that I helped uh, begin. It's called Reflection Films. And uh, we have a clip for you of the, well, actually it's a speed reel of Reflection Films' work. All right, let's, let's roll that reel yeah. for Reflection Films. Mike, where can we see these films? They're very exciting. Well, uh, where can you see these films? Well, Those That Play Your Clowns, which is the one that we officially debuted with, mm -hmm. and we sent to a bunch of film festivals. Uh, we just found out that it's going to be screened at the Boston International Film Festival. Congratulations. So, thank you. So you could see it in Boston in April, <laughs> if you want to go. Booking my to ticket. Boston. Um, but Reflection Films is in the process of creating their website and their YouTube channel. Uh, the YouTube channel is already up, uh, actually, but um, you it'll be easier to find it through the website. Um, but yeah, it's there and you'll be able to see most of it online. So yeah. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, so you have not been in New Mexico for a relatively long amount of time, but you have just dug in and built your list of credits here. Yeah. And you've worked with Reflection Films. So tell us where, what brought you to New Mexico? Uh, after graduating college, I moved to Manhattan uh, to begin there. And I uh, was lucky enough to get an agent relatively quickly. And the first job he helped me get was for a theater in Virginia called the Barter Theater, like you barter for goods. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was founded during the Depression when you could, um, you could, if you didn't have any money, you could bring eggs to see a play. <laughs> but they have a resident acting company, and I was there for 12 and a half years. And uh, we premiered a play there that is, is connected with a film company here in New Mexico. And they offered me work. 
What's this film company's uh, name? The film company is called First Serve Productions. It's a handball term. Uh, and uh, they invited me to come out and work with them administratively and as an actor. Mm -hmm. And the, another big project that I'm working on at the moment is that we are in development for uh, a feature with them. It's called, well, at the moment it's called Fire in the Rain. It was called Chrome <laughs> Bike, but as these things change, you know? Yes. And uh, it's going to be shot in New Mexico, the, hopefully in Chama, with oh, all wow. New Mexico crew and actors. Mm -hmm. There'll Excellent. probably be some, uh, you know, some uh, Hollywood A-listers who come to fill yes. the larger roles, but, but it'll be a New Mexico production. Now, you're not paying the actors in groceries by any chance? No, we're not bartering. <laughs> no, no, there's sort of money thing. in health care. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so hopefully that'll be happening you know, fingers crossed in a year, but you know, these things take a long time. And so, so now you've kind of gotten caught onto that producer bug. You start off as an actor, as uh -huh. you mentioned. Anymore these days, we see a lot of actors writing their own work, creating a web series. Mm. What do you think that comes out of? Why do you think actors are turning in that direction these days? Well, I think it is a, there's a need to express yourself if you're an artist of any sort, and you need a platform to do that mm -hmm. in. And so producing is a way to create your own stage. I came from a theatrical uh, background, so that's the metaphor that I use often. Like, okay, you can be great at what you do, but someone might not want you because, you know, you have an amazing beard. So, which you do have which, an amazing beard. Right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, I've got beard envy right now. <laughs> beard envy. I do not believe. I have beard envy. Oh, too. she's got beard. It's all it's crazy. <laughs> so, so, the producing is a way to create your own stage. So, in fact, another uh, project that I'm working on is there's a, a dear friend of mine, playwright uh, Derek Davidson, yes, okay. who teaches at an uh, Appalachian State University in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And he and I are working on a one-man show that we're hoping to... Uh, no, we're not hoping. We're doing this. We're bringing it to Scotland. There's a theater festival called the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, Excellent. which is the, the largest uh, theatrical fringe festival in the world. And uh, we're going to premiere it there in August. But we have to finish writing it. What's your piece about a one-man show? Uh, Tell us about this. Yeah, now. it's a good question. They need to know this for the application process. Mm. Um, <laughs> no, it is about, uh, it's a journey of self-discovery, and it's the context, uh, the content is about American anxiety and connection to Earth. So it's going to have a lot to do with gardening and about why one would need it. Does that come from personal experience? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Tell us about the earth. Expound <laughs> on it. What are your feelings on earthworms? Have you gardened before? Do you garden? Uh, you should. You on. should. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, no. Yeah. No, not so garden. Much. Garden. What does it give garden. you? What garden. What does it provide? Um, okay. The human species has been on the planet for this long. Mm -hmm. But we've only been inside for that long. Inside with electricity. So we're hardwired to be outside. So there's a theory that a lot of anxiety or a basic mental illness is caused because we're not hardwired to be living the technical lives that we're leading. Hmm. Eco-psychology is the name of it. So I'm interested in it. Wow, that topic just really sparks my interest because we are now even condensing ourselves more into that technological world yeah. with all our devices and tablets. Yeah. So your piece, I, I hope you write this and do this, Mike. Yeah, we're going to do we it. Need to see we're this. absolutely going to do it. And it's live theater, so it should be interesting. It's, you know, it's like being in front of a campfire. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a closer mechanism to communicating. There's less, there's nothing between you and the people watching it. They could it's, touch you. Yeah. You. Your plants. Yes, you could. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So have you made a shrine at the farmers market? No, but the farmers market is a shrine, Mike. Pass me a yeah. Kleenex. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. See, I knew yeah. you would hit it off. <laughs> so, Mike, you have, you, you, your spectrum of work is really amazing. And you've been able to do a lot of different work in New Mexico. So how has New Mexico supported the ideas you want to do on screen and on stage? And what else do you want to do here? That's a great question. Um, Albuquerque is an amazing place for independent film. It's also an amazing place for theater. Mm -hmm. uh, dear friends of mine have started Duke City Repertory Theater. There's a lot of awesome theaters, Mother Road and, uh, and uh, Trick Lock. And there's so many. I'm embarrassed that I can't remember them all right now. Forgive me. Forgive me. Um, but uh, And a lot of the stand-up uh, comedy yes. and improvisational theater that happens here. 
But I also moved in, out here in part because friends of mine from the Barter Theater, uh, uh, one of them in particular, Amelia Ampuero, who you guys interviewed yes. recently, yes. she oh, started yeah. Duke City Repertory, and so I came out and did a couple shows with them as well. And they're opening one tonight, or last night, Edgar Allan Poe, a yes. uh, new piece. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just called Poe, but it's lovely. And uh, yeah, so there's all kinds of, it's fertile ground. Oh, do you get that? Or, yeah. Uh, yeah. What's the one thing, you, what's the best thing you could get out of this experience in New Mexico with your art, the next step? Um, like I said, uh, it is a fertile ground for people to try things and to roll up their sleeves and to experience it and fall down and learn from it. Um, there's, there's not, a, there's the, the level of pretentiousness, there, it's a safe place the level of pretentiousness is very low. It's a safe place to, to try and to, and to, to build up your skill set. Yeah, people are kind of all on the same team here. I will never look at another bell pepper the same way again. <laughs> yeah. Mike, thank you for your wisdom and your input and making art that relates to all of us and stories that we need to hear. Thank Absolutely. you for being on the show today. Thanks for having me. Thanks again. You want a hug? Let's take it in stages. No, we're going to do it! <laughs> Please! Please. <laughs> Woo! We've got to get out of here. Well, thank you for joining us today on New Mexico Media Makers with our guests, Rachel Ronsick and Mike Ostrowski. We're your hosts, Catherine Palapas, and with me, as always, my Mike Gaba. I need a cigarette. <laughs> Tune in next week to see what's hot and happening in New Mexico media. Until then, keep smiling. You never know when you're going to be on camera. <laughs> see you in an hour. Nice guy. <laughs>